Imagine, Islamic soldiers force your 10-year-old son to gather wood for a fire. The soldiers pressure him to convert to Islam. When he refuses, he's thrown on the burning wood he collected and left to die. They told me I would be released if I became a Muslim. I told them that was not possible. I am a Christian, so they threw me on the fire. Your son escapes, but the scars remain, a reminder of his sacrifice. Imagine, your teenage daughter goes to Bible camp. On the second day, the students are attacked. One of the attackers secures her hands behind her back, while another holds a piece of broken glass to her stomach. She's told to deny Christ. I did not answer him, so he pressed the glass harder against me. Do you believe your God can help you? He asked. Dripped with fear, she cries out, Help me, Lord, I do not want to deny you. Imagine, your pastor has refused to register his church with the government. During the service, he's dragged from the church and beaten by the local police. When the officers find a Bible hidden in his shirt, he's beaten with it. After returning home, I felt pain all over my body. It was almost numb at the beginning, but later became so painful that I could not sleep. It is the fifth time he's been arrested. If he's caught again, the police say they will kill him. Every day, thousands of Christians are persecuted for their faith. Hundreds are martyred, about one every three minutes. They're not heroes or statistics. They're family. In over 40 nations around the globe, our family is assaulted for their testimony of Jesus Christ. In most instances, the persecution could have been averted if they had simply denied Christ. But they didn't, and they won't. In Sudan, an Islamic army set on jihad, or holy war, has systematically targeted Christians. Death and suffering can be seen throughout the countryside. Countless Christians are being displaced within their own country. Fleeing from persecution, they've lost everything, often arriving at refugee camps with nothing more than the clothes on their backs. In spite of heavy persecution, the church in Sudan continues growing at astonishing rates. Many of the believers bear the scars of their faith, but they also bear a testimony to God's faithfulness. Over 500 churches have been destroyed in Indonesia. On the island of Ambon, Christians have been massacred in a so-called religious cleansing by radical Muslims. Facing increased persecution, pastors in Jakarta have encouraged their congregations to stand firm, confident that their suffering is a prelude to coming revival. With the fall of communism in Eastern Europe, many have hailed its defeat. But Christians in North Korea, Vietnam, Laos, or China would disagree. Hmong villagers have been imprisoned in Vietnam and Laos after converting to Christianity. Some have had boiling water poured down their throats for simply possessing a Bible in their own language. The Hmong tribe is the largest in Southeast Asia, numbering 10 million. Meeting secretly in homes, more than 2 million have recently committed their lives to Christ. The persecution facing our brothers and sisters is not a human tragedy. It's a spiritual reality facing the body of Christ. We may not be able to stop the attacks, but we can ease their pain. Through prayer, encouragement, and practical assistance, we can fellowship in their suffering. We can show them that they are not forgotten. It's hard to ignore their pain after you hear their cries. <laughs> Tuhan, tolong. Tuhan, tolong.